Hello, so today in this video, I'm basically going to be showing you how to get the most out of using uh, the MIDI loops that you're currently looking at. Um, what you'll get out of this video is uh, an understanding of how boom bap beats are kind of put together, um, how you should be thinking about what samples to use, the VST uh, presets that you should um, sort of be aiming to put on top of all of this, and what kind of loops to combine things with to basically make a nice cohesive uh, sounding beat that you can put in any kind of hip hop drum track that you want and how you can use the same sounds in different ways, mixing up patterns uh, and that kind of thing. So I hope you get something uh, useful out of this video. It should only take a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm kind of winging it, so I'll be as quick as I can. But if you are interested in learning, uh, aside from anything else, then just, just watch the video anyway, because you'll probably learn something. So here's an example of something I put together quickly. Okay. Before you buy <laughs> these MIDI samples, uh, I don't want you to think that using the sam uh, using the MIDI files are going to just make your drums sound good like that, because that's not how MIDI files work, at least for, uh, sorry, that's not how drum MIDI files work, uh, straight off the bat anyway. You kind of have to do a bit of preparation on your software, and uh, this is the same for any software. It, um, you need to basically, for example, prepare your sampler instruments to, be, to actually be played like an instrument, so um, as best as you can. So for example, here's a snare drum. Let me see. Snare drum, where's the key? That's a snare drum, obviously. <laughs> but it's more than just a, a straight up sample being played. Um, I don't know what software you're using, but they all work the same, so figure it out, I guess. The terminology is all the same. So we're looking at velocity just now. If you attach velocity to amplitude, amp gain, which is basically the harder I press the key on my keyboard, the louder the sample will be. So if I press it hard, press it soft. Okay. <clears throat> it's meant to basically simulate hitting a snare drum in real life uh more realistic it, it lets you it, it allows for more realistic patterns and that kind of thing um to be honest you probably already know this um but i felt the need to mention it anyway but we can take it even further than that um at least with this sampler you can now if you ever if you've ever played a snare drum you'll know that when you hit it harder, it also kind of sounds different. It's not literally just the same sample being louder or quieter. It's a physical instrument that sounds uh, different depending on how you hit it. Now, obviously I can't simulate that in a sampler completely, but I'll do my best. So what I also like to do is with the velocity information, I, ro I route it to the, uh, the attack on the amplitude envelope. So basically, the harder I hit this, the key, the uh, more attack there is, or sorry, the the, the less attack there is, the, the, the harder the sound hits, basically. But you'll notice, if I play it softer, see, the sound gets harder or softer. And you can basically, combine this with loads of things. Look, if I go into here, I'm not going to do this, but uh, just but just for demonstration's sake, uh, I'll route the velocity this in the same way to the to the pitch. So as I press the key at different velocities, there'll be slightly different pitches. Now you don't want it to be wildly different. So kind of just keep it subtle, like about about there. So the harder I hit it there, the lower the pitch goes. I can do it the other direction. Let 
Same sort of thing. It's subtle, but it's there. You can do it with a. Uh, yep, you can do it with filters as well. That was the wrong thing. You can do it with filters as well. There we go. There we go. I fixed it. I fixed it. <laughs> Which I guess in this case drives the filter quite hard. Uh, so you can see why I'm not turning that one on just now. But you get the picture. You can apply it to loads of different things. So you watch here. Okay. But before you even get here, <coughs> you actually need good samples. That's why I've put together these kits. You want to group some of your favorite samples together in a way that you can reuse them again. So you know these good, these samples sound good together. That's a good sort of pre-made drum kit. And you combine this with the different MIDI files. Combine it with different MIDI files. Um, after preparing your instrument, sort of like how I've demonstrated, and you can make somewhat realistic sounding drum beats. Oh, re realistic is uh, realistic's maybe not the right word. Uh, good, we'll say good. Good sounding boom bap drum beats. I've even done the same thing with the kick drum. So the harder the the note of the kick drum is played, the more attack it has. The louder it is. Uh, and if you play it softer, then there's less attack and it's quieter as well. Same thing with the hi-hats. <clears throat> now, what really makes the boom bap beat come together is combining it with loops. Uh, this is from a pack that's not out yet, but uh, combining it with loops and also combining it with some sort of... Um, Mastering chain, let's say. This is let's just say this is the mastering chain. We've heard that phrase before. So if I turn it off. That was really quiet. It's not got any effect on it. What you want to do is uh, simulate real drums as best as you can, while somewhat keeping it computerized, unique, modern. At least at least that's what I like to do. Um so for example, if you run it through saturation everything is getting put through the saturation. So everything has the same sound, if you will, put on top of it. Um, RC Retro, you've all seen this plugin. It simulates vinyl noise, old distortion, digital artifacts, bit of reverb, uh, some filtering down at the bottom. But the point is that it's all going through it together at the same time. And that's what makes your drum beat sound cohesive. Same with OTT, it's all going through that. And it's all going through this compressor. That's why the drum beat kind of sounds cohesive. Like it's not enough. It's not enough to just have sounds that kind of all work together. You need to somewhat combine it like this. Like you're kind of mastering your drums for being used in a beat, which, you know, will also be mastered in the end. Um, so I hope that kind of clears things up a little bit and i hope you're still watching because we're going to we're going to start using the midi files now um oh last thing to make the hi-hat sound a bit better i've also put a bit of delay on it tiny tiny bit if you're wearing headphones you'd probably hear that um so if i delete the midi that just leaves us with that loop we'll just leave that loop for now um Let's pick a random snare loop. Let's go with that one. Uh, random kick loop, that one. I have another screen, so that's why I'm looking up here. And a couple of hi-hat loops. Let's do this one, which uh, I'll probably need to randomize the velocity a bit in that. 
and let's do this one. Actually, let's swap these round just to keep it more simple. Right, let's see what this sounds like. See, pretty good, pretty good. But you'll probably want to adjust a couple of things anyway just to keep it, uh, just to keep yourselves happy. So let's listen to the snare drum first. I think that's maybe a bit too high. So let's just bring it down. Lower the velocity a bit. That's better. Kick drum. Yeah, it's pretty simple actually. We'll just leave that. Hi hats. Oh. It was the right way around, my bad. There we go. Combine it with that hi hat and the folly loop. a bit loud. Why don't we try a different Foley loop as well, just to change it up a bit. Uh, this one. Yeah. There you go. Um, I hope you see what I mean. Um, so the MIDI loops are there to basically give you uh, an idea of what the patterns can be, but it, it is still up to you to sort of change things uh, to still make it sound good. Um, that's why you need to prepare your project file like this, so you, so you just do sort of minimal tweaking here and there. Like you saw what I did. All I did was change the pitch of that a little bit, and then I uh, changed the Foley loop, yeah. Let's try a different kick loop. I think this one's a bit more complicated. Yeah, there we go. Let's try different drum sounds. Uh, let's try, what kit should we try? Should we try that kit? Yeah, sure, let's try that kit. So in my software, I just drag it in to replace it. Uh, yep. I might need to adjust this a little bit. Adjust your levels. Try a different Foley loop. Sure. Try with the rest of it. Sounds pretty good. 
Maybe I want to adjust the pitch of this uh, kick a little bit. We'll do one more, uh, then I'll call the then we'll call the video there. Uh, that one. What does that one do? Straight up pattern. A little bit of variation in it there. I think that'll probably need to be adjusted. Do it like that. And a snare pattern. Right. Pitch it down a little bit. Actually, let's just to prove my point, uh, let's try another drum kit. What was that? Number six or something, wasn't it? What would we do? Uh, where is it? That one. I like this one. What was that? Number one. Nothing wrong with making little adjustments. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I made the pack so you can sort of combine any combination of the snare, kick, and hi-hat ones together. Um, I do recommend layering it with some sort of percussion loop, just to give it a bit more of a natural feel. If you can record the percussion loop yourself, maybe like with a shaker, um, I thought I had a shaker, uh, something like that, um, it'll just basically help everything come together more. The more layers up to a point, the better generally. Um, so if you're still watching, <laughs> thanks for watching to the end. I know it's been a bit lengthy, but uh, I hope you get, uh, I hope you've got the idea of what this uh, pack's meant to do. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>